wonderful as always to see everybody. Um, we're, we're feeling already Erev Shabbos. I almost could wish everybody a good Erev Shabbos. And uh, we are uh, in the uh, eighth parak with Mishnah Zion and the first Mishnah of the ninth parak. Wow, it's amazing. Uh, we uh, are sponsored by the Fisher family, the Nishmas Basi Bas Rabbit, Shlomo Ben Avram Alevi, Peril Bas Ruvain, also Lively Nishmas David Ben Chaim, the Refush Lame of Felio Mosh Ben Chaisar, for the Schus of Avram Yom Benish Ben Malki Hudas, by your Klugman and family, Refush Lame of Femir Ben Chaisar. Also, we want to wish a Mazel Tov to uh, our uh, dear Balkari Gedalia and his mm-hmm. wife. Uh, tonight is the Vachnacht for their Enikel. Tomorrow morning, they're going to bring their Enikel to the Bris Hashal Avram Avinu. Should be Zeichel Zayn Bismanai. A Mazel Tov. Where did he go? He left. Yeah. He, he had to leave. I went to share with us. Mazel Tov to Reb Fonfetter, who has. Uh, a uh, Enochel got married last night. Uh, sim- such simchas for all of us. Uh, okay, so we are holding in the seventh Mishnah. So, and this is a perfect mi- Mishnah for Elul. I mean, this is perfect, perfectly scripted for Elul. Afal pishu Even if the assailant pays the five payments, the nezek tzari prishavas and baishas, the sin is not forgiven for him until he asks the victim for mechila. Hashem told Avimelech now to return the married woman Sarah to Avram and uh, you should ask him to be mispal to pray. And the idea is, is that a person won't pray unless, uh, uh, unless uh, he, uh, 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 he didn't say ask to pray, but he said he will pray for you. Avram will pray for you that you should, because they had a complete shutdown of all their offices. They couldn't go to the bathroom, they couldn't uh, have babies. So he'll pray for you. And the idea is, is that Avram wouldn't pray for him unless he forgives him. Now, how do you know that the person that was uh, harmed shouldn't be uh, cruel, shouldn't say, I'm not forgiving you. Even though Avimelech abducted his wife, Avram uh, prayed for him. And indeed, Hashem cured Avimelech. So we see that a person should be forgiven. Now, a new case. A person says, blind my eye. Cut off my foot. Break my leg. Because he, he, he would say, you really think I was serious? You can't assume that somebody is going to want to have harm to himself. And even if he says, al manas liftar, if I do it, will I be exempt? And even if the person says yes, still chayev. So I was just, I was just pulling your leg. You, you think I would want you to, to blind my eye? Are you a sugar? Now in the next case, the Gemara sets up the ne- next case as a case we it's talking about where I gave to Reb Elia my uh, garment or my jug to watch. So he was mekabel to watch it. And then he says, then, then I tell him, cry Susi, rip my clothing, shvores kadi, break my jar. Even though, uh, no, not even though, but the Taisis Yantu says, only because he already accepted to watch it. So even if I tell him to tear my garment or break my jug, chayef. I'm an ass lifter. He says, on the condition that I'll be potter, so then potter. 
by uh, property, he's potter. And the Gemara says a bigger chiddush that even if he says almanas lifter, and I say no, I meant it no beloshin bitmia. No, I just told you you could do it. And in such a case, he would be potter. But if I tell Rabbi Elia, I say kain leish plainy. You, you should go and uh, <laughs> rip Sabbath's clothing. And uh, even if he says, I'm an Aslifter, and I'll be Potter, if, uh, uh, even then, Chayef. I, he says, he did it on Rabbi Weiss's agency. And this is true, whether I tell him to hit Sabbath, or if I tell him to rip his clothing. He's, and even if he says, and I'll be potter, and I say yes, he's still chayv. Now, there's a very yesidistic idiot in the Pasuk of returning what we steal. It says, Veheshev esagzela asher gozal. Now the words asher gozal are totally superfluous. Because obviously, if you have to return the theft, obviously you stole it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be theft. So why does it say, Ve'eshev is exela asher gaza? And the answer is, you only have to return it if it's the way it was when you stole it. But if you made a shinui, if you made a change, then you don't have to return the actual item, because you were coined it with shinui, and you just have to return the value of what you stole. So the Mishnah now says, Hagaisel ate him. Let's look at a, a particularly guilty person here. I'm a Abraham. He has that look of mischief on his face. So Hagaisel ate him. He steals wood from Rabbi Friedman. The Asin Kalim, and he made it into a chess set. Samar, he stole wool. The Asin begot him, and he made it into a cloak. He doesn't have to give him back the chess set. He doesn't have to give him back the cloak because it's not the Yishev Esagzel Asher Gaza. Mishalem Kishas Agzel. He just has to give back Rabbi Friedman wood, the value of the wood, and the value of the wool. Now the plot thickens. Gazal Pora Muberes Violda. He stole from Rabbi Friedman a pregnant cow and he gave birth. Or Rachel Tuna, or a sheep full of wool, uh, a ram actually, right? Uh, or a ewe, right? So Rachel Tuna, he stole a ewe full of, uh, its, was full, its wool was grown, and then Uxazah. Chal Avram sheared off the wool. So now, here it's an interesting thing. What does he have to give back? Does he have to give back the actual cow? The actual sheep? It is changed. The cow was pregnant, and now it's not. The sheep was full of wool, and now it's not. So the Gemara says that's not a big enough change. So he has to give back to Rabbi Freeman, the actual cow, the actual sheep, and then he has to pay him the value of the wool that was on, he doesn't have to give him the wool that he uh, shore, sh sheared off. He doesn't have to give him the baby that was born. He has to give him the difference between a regular cow and a pregnant cow. The difference between a regular U and a U full of wool on it. So, Mishalm made Parahoy Medis Lelate. Now, this doesn't mean literally the, the value of a cow that's ready to give birth because he has to give back the cow. Then he has to give him the difference of what the extra value is of a pregnant cow to a regular cow. That he has to give to Rabbi Friedman. And the Merachaloy Medis Ligazes. And the, he gives him back the U, and then the difference of how much it's worth when it's full of wool on it. Now, interesting case. 
Gazal para, and by the way, the Chalavram, that's three strikes and you're out. Right? This is the third time he's stealing. You better lock your door better, Rabbi Freeman. Um, Gazal para, he stole a cow. Now the cow was not pregnant. Vinisabra etzloi. And then the cow became pregnant by Michal, the Yolda, and gave birth. Rachel, he stole a ewe that wasn't with wool. The Nitana, and it got full of wool by Michal, Ugezaza, and he sheared off the wool. Mishalem Kishas He only has to give him back the cow, and he only has to give him back the uh, ewe. Because when he stole it, it was not pregnant, and when he stole it, it didn't have wool on it. So you only have to pay Zaklal, Kalagaz, Lonim, all thieves, Mishalmin, Kishas, Exel. They pay only the time, how it was at the time when they stole it. Rabbi say, I want to remind you what the schedule is tonight is 815, is the, uh, is the uh, DAF, and then afterwards they'll be for the Shabbos table. Uh, I want to remind you again that there's a share for men and women. I would say it's a more important share than usual. It's Osiris for the days of Elul. And uh, the days of Elul are special. And they need Osiris. So uh, come with your wives. And if you have any children with you, bring them along uh, at uh, 5.30 on Shabbos. And... Uh, Rabbi Lapa is going to be sponsoring Bishal Shudas this Shabbos. And thank you for joining us, and have a wonderful evening.